We have something absolutely special. As you know, it is a new month. Yep. It's a new month and a new month means a new series. Okay. And this month's series is on the Besha. Besha. On the Peso. The, the Dinero. <laughs> it's on the money. <laughs> hey, that, it's, it's on the money. <laughs> so we did a random research, actually a video interview, <laughs> to ask a whole bunch of different guys, uh, what would you do? What would you do? If Yanni favor came onto your life. Huh? Hallelujah. And just got five million Kenya shillings. What? This is what the different random people had to say. Okay. Check this out, Mavuno. I'll just, one is just buy property. And for maybe a million. And the other four million, I buy an apartment. Uh, five million shillings, uh, I would invest. 1.5 million on real estate and property. Uh, first of all, I shall uh, look for a place of my reach, maybe to buy a plot for me. I will, um, first of all, I will pay my fees till the end of my final sum. Uh, put it in fund, mutual funds. Or buy a car that I Buy a car that I love. Uh, I would sell my car and buy a bigger one, a BMW. I'd go shopping. This September, at a Mavuno near you, come and discover what your mama didn't tell you about money. Wow, how you doing, Mavuno? Why is it, what, what's up with Kenyans and plots? Everybody's just talking about buying land, buying plots. Oh my goodness. Tell your neighbor, do you have a caprot? <laughs> and they're probably not going to tell you if they do anyway. So, hey, it's great to see you this afternoon. How are you doing? Tell your neighbor, happy new month. It's so good to see you in September. It's so great to cross into this month together. I am so excited to be here this afternoon. And let me just say, um, I was asked to share this, but if you, if you filled out one of those Mizizi slips and you did not put it into the offering basket, uh, make sure you bring it out. There's a Mizizi tent. You can ask any questions about it. And I want to challenge you, even if you've not maybe thought about taking you're not, you're, you're, the, the thought of, my goodness, do I want to commit 10 weeks to this? Here's my encouragement. Come even just for Tuesday. Just show up Tuesday, check that out, and then you can make a decision after that because then you're going to see what is this thing really and where I want to commit to it. So I'm going to encourage you to do that. And then also just to say with the Rwanda team, I'm so excited about the team that just came back. They signed up 87 people, and today we're actually sending out a team to go and start running the Mizizi in Kigali. And the most exciting thing for me is it's not just a team from Mavuno, Nairobi. There's a team from Mavuno, Kampala as well that I've said people who are willing to come from Nairobi spend 10 weeks on the bus to actually come and bring us this thing. We want to take it out to others as well. So we're going to have half a team, actually a team of Ugandans uh, com combining with a team of Kenyans. They're the ones who are going to be facilitating Mizizi. And the team goes this week. So if you can remember to pray for them, I uh, would really appreciate uh, your doing so. And then let me also say that we are doing a series on money. And we've thought about money quite a bit at Mavuno Church. Uh, this month, the series is called What Your Mama Didn't Tell You About Money. With all due respect to your mama. Because I know she's a fine woman, and uh, she taught you good things about money. But the stuff I, I'm hoping that we're going to learn is stuff that I suspect you didn't learn at home. It's stuff I suspect you didn't learn uh, in, through reading a, a, a self-help book. It's stuff I suspect you didn't, you didn't learn in business school either. And it's stuff that I'm learning as well. It's stuff that has been really a blessing for me to learn. And so I want to share that with you. But even as I do so, for those of you who have not been part of Mavuno for very long, uh, you... You, 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 you've been wondering when we talk about what are the other things we've thought about money. We've got a, a couple of really great resources here and you can find a copy outside if you're interested. Uh, one is the Show Me the Money. Uh, this was something we did a couple of years ago. I did this alongside with a, a, a great gentleman, a friend of mine called Mr. Anthony Wahome. And I tell you, this has changed lives. Uh, it's all on DVD, uh, it's, it's, so it's video format. You can pop it in and watch it, and it's a really, really great resource. And it just teaches some incredible things about money. A couple of years, a year before that, I think we did this one called Financial Fitness, and the little book as well. I had a friend, a friend of mine just shared the story of how when he got this, very early when he first started coming to Mavuno, he picked a copy of this. And he says he went home, and just before he went to bed, he, he made the mistake of starting to read the first 
uh, page. He says, I couldn't put it down until pretty much at 3. He said, 3 o'clock in the night is when I finally managed to finish it. And he said, it completely changed my life. Uh, he says, right now, even my family has been transformed because of my reading of this. So if you're interested, uh, this guy's at the media desk. have done a great job for us. They've packaged this to at 500 shillings. And so you don't just have to get yourself something. You can get it for somebody else. And maybe you have a friend who needs to read this or to, to go through this. Let me give you a hint. There's somebody who owes you money. Uh -huh. And you've been praying for some breakthrough that God will just convict them and make them pay your money. Maybe you need to just give them one of these. Uh, they need to just sort themselves out financially, and then maybe they'll be able to pay you back. But anyway, I just want to put those out there for you. And if you're interested, then please pass by the media desk and pick those. But I want to just welcome you again to Mavuno. My name is uh, Muraydi Wanjao. I'm the lead pastor of Mavuno Church. And uh, like I said, we're going through a sermon series called, Show Me, uh, <laughs> called What Your Mama Didn't Tell You About Money. And here's the thing, though. For a long time, even though I like, now I teach about money quite a bit, for a long time, I did not like teaching about money. I just did not enjoy the process. When I, the church I worked at, I worked at Nairobi Chapel then as a pastor, and every time it came around and I, I could see money was one of the things I were going to teach, I, I'd, I'd plan to be on leave that month so they don't pick me to be the one to preach about it. I just did not enjoy talking about money. And when I went to go back, I, I, I tried to go back through and ask, why is it that it took me such a long time to do this? The biggest reason was because of televangelists. I mean, guy, I used to just get so uncomfortable. I mean, the picture, if I, many, so many guys out there have of money and the church. It's just a place where you'll be hustled and shaken down and guys will just be looking for, you know, teach, teaching all kinds of mumbo jumbo to get money out of you. And televangelists don't help very much because I, I'd always turn the page, and I mean, turn on the channel and you find a guy, it doesn't matter what passage of scripture he starts from. Somehow the application is always an M-Pesa number at the bottom of the screen. And you're like, dude, no, that's not what the Bible is talking about. I, I would get embarrassed watching these guys. And many times there'd be this thing called a telethon and they bring all these high power guys and all they're doing is just shaking you down to keep them on air. And I'd be like, no, this is bringing a shame to the gospel of Christ. I did not want to be associated with anything like that. I remember one uh, meeting, one faithful meeting, my wife and I went and this great person had come and they were, they were preaching, they preached a storm up, and I was like, okay, okay. Then at the end of the thing, they did it. I mean, it's like they, they got us to all stand up and to visualize the car you've always wanted to drive. I was like, okay, dude, I mean, that's easy. And of course, we're all visualizing. And then she says, okay, come to the front because we've got anointing oil. We're going to pray for all of you because God wants to give you the car of your dreams. And of course, the little catch, there's a little seed thing that you have to plant. Now, how does car grow out of... I mean, at that point, she just lost me. I was like, no, this thing doesn't work. And so for a long time, I was very uninterested in teaching about money. I thought, you know, let, let God's people sort out. If they want to support God's work, that's their problem. If they don't want, that's their problem as well. And for a long time, I just didn't want to teach about money. And then I began to wonder, am I missing something here? Because as I went through the Bible, I found it talks a mighty lot about money. In fact, one person said, and I probably, this is probably very close to, to truth, he said there are over 3,200 verses in the Bible that talk about money or, or passages in the Bible that talk about money specifically. The Bible talks a lot about money. When you go to Jesus, you find no difference. Because I found that Jesus, <laughs> in fact, this is the interesting thing about Jesus, and even now as I've been reading through the, as we're going through our one-year Bible, he talks about money a whole lot. In fact, one other person said, you know, one theologian said, Jesus talks about money more than any other topic in the Bible except the kingdom of God. 20%, one out of five passages about Jesus actually have to do either directly or indirectly with money. And I began to ask myself, why is this? What am I missing here? I mean, what, what, why is Jesus talking so much about money? And as I asked myself the question, I began to wonder, is it because he knows or he knew that money is such an important issue for us human beings. That a lot of the time in our day is spent thinking about how to make it, how to get it, how to, where to be in order to find more. That it's spent, a lot of our waking time is, is spent thinking and planning about money. A lot of our time is spent involved in thinking about how to grow rich or what to do. And maybe he knew that. Maybe he knew that we're such grabbers or claspers or, or, or clutchers. Even though we think we're clutching onto money, that perhaps it has clutched onto us 
in ways we don't even realize. Because you see, it began to become obvious to me that as human beings, we are natural clutchers. Just look at your hand right now. Just put your hand in front of your face like this. What is the direction that your fingers are inclined towards? It's like they're waiting, isn't it? I mean, it's like your, 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 your fingers don't, none, none of you has hands like go like that, go this other way. Eh? It's like your fingers just, they're waiting. And it's like, I can tell you, I wasn't there when you were born. And I thank God for that. Because you know this modern day thing about fathers being in labor wards? Uh, I don't actually buy that stuff. There's some things men were not created to experience. Okay, sorry, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I shall move on with my sermon at this point. Uh, but I just don't buy that stuff. But anyway, uh, but I can tell you, even though I wasn't in your labor ward, I can tell you how your hand came out. As a little baby, closed eyes, everything, you don't even know what's going on, but you're ready like this. And I mean, I was at my cousin's, I was looking at my cousin's little baby the other day. And I mean, she's born premature, he's born premature, but even with his eyes closed, there's just this thing. He's already clasping onto something. And what you do with a baby, you put your little finger next to their hand. What do they do? Shabu! They just catch it immediately. And I want to tell you this, that when you became a toddler and the neighboring mother brought uh, the children to play with your toys and share your toys, what did you tell them? Your favorite two words that nobody taught you, you just knew them instinctively. No. Okay, guys, in this service don't have kids, I can tell you. First, no. The other one is mine. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If you have children, you know. This is what children say. Now, I even wonder with my kids, surely I'm a pastor. They should have been saying something like, praise the Lord, come and share my toys. <laughs> no. Even pastor's kids, no difference. No. Mine. And you have to teach, I mean, it's like you have to force them to give their toy to the other child because they just clasp onto it. And of course, we go to high school. What's the thing we do? You clasp onto your answers. Who taught Kenyans how to write like this? <laughs> it's like you're thinking, somebody might see my answers and become cleverer than me and get more marks than me, you know? And so we just, we, this is an entirely Kenyan thing, just writing like this. Uh, over your answers. And then, of course, we go to the workplace and we clutch on to our business ideas. We clutch on to anything we're doing. I mean, I tried to talk to some guys about money and my goodness, uh, I don't know if you've had this experience, especially guys are like this. Uh, you know a guy is doing well, you know you want to tell, to tell him about money and you sit with him and you try and find out exactly what he's doing to get rich. And the guy just gives you a whole spin and at the end you're like, this guy told me nothing. He told me just enough that if I'm interested, he can sell me the same thing. But he's of course thinking, I don't, why should I give it to you? I can make money from you as well. And it's like we're still grabbing, we're still clutching. We're hoping to clutch on to, golf, uh, to our golf sticks when we retire. And for us as human beings, clutching is as natural as breathing. And so I began to realize, maybe, maybe this is why Jesus talks so much about money. He knows something that we don't know about ourselves. And so this month I want to talk about what your mama didn't tell you about money. And today I want to share one principle. I'm going to share four principles this month. So today you get to hear the first principle. It's a very simple principle. It's a foundational principle. And this principle is this. Free your heart. Free your heart. Turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. And I want us to look at a scripture there. That is an amazing scripture. This is in the middle of a passage. This is one of great Jesus' greatest recorded sermons, the Sermon on the Mount. And in it, he talks a lot about money as usual. But there's one passage there, right in the middle. I'm going to read one verse today, and then we'll continue with that next week. Matthew 6, chapter 24. And he says some amazing things. Matthew 6, 24. It's a very simple uh, passage. Are you there? Matthew 6, 24. And this is what it says. Matthew 6, 24. It says, No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. Then let's read that part together. You cannot serve both God and money. Money with a capital M. Let's pray.